Hello viewers, today we are going to have a very special video and um, it is special because you will get to know during the video. I'm here today with my brother Moses. <laughs> Your place is nice. Yeah, you have a very good environment. Sure. Wow. So what do you do here? Okay, we are into fish farming, everything fish. Uh, what we do is that we produce fingerlings, we produce adult fishes, both tilapia and catfishes. And also have the feed mill that produces feed. We have staff who still, we have the canteen for our staff that feed them morning and afternoon. So we, we, we just doing everything superb here. Wow, that means you are doing a lot all together. Yeah. Yes, we are going to have a nice time here. And uh, I bet you we are going to learn a lot. So those of you who are interested in going into fish farming, this video is for you. Wow. Thank you. So this, we have the catfish hatchery. We have two catfish hatcheries. This is the first one and the other one is outside. Uh, this is Madam Gifty. She is the one in charge of the hatchery. She does the hatching, everything, fingerlings, taking care of them, the fries, till they get to a fingerling stage. So, meet Gifty. Oh, okay. Madam Gifty, how are you? Let me take my cap so that you can really see me. Hold on, Gifty. So you are in charge here? Yes, I am. Well, what is this place? Hatchery, what is it? What do you do here? Over oh, here, yeah. we bring in female fishes that are ripe, which eggs are matured enough to be hatched. So we do spawning and fertilization of female catfish eggs to hatch new fries, which in turn turn into fingerlings. That's what we do here, basically. It's like a maternity ward. We bring in female and male fishes, catfish, mature. This is a maternity ward? Yes. You bring in male and female? Catfish. Catfish, okay. Yes, and spawn them. Then we harvest their eggs, fertilize them, then we get our fry. What do you fertilize the eggs with? We fertilize them with the male uh, milk. In terms where we come to human form, the sperm. Be right? real, be real. Yeah, the sperm. Male what? The sperm. Yeah, but we call this the milt. We the milt? Yes. Oh, okay. Catfish is called milt. So the catfish sperm is called the, the milt. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, so that's what we do. So we extract the eggs from the female. Okay. Then we fertilize it with the male milt. Okay. We put them in our. So it means you also extract the milt from the catfish? Yes, the catfish meal, we sacrifice it. We have to operate it, take out the sperm cells before fertilizing it with the eggs. But the females, we just extract the eggs after injecting it with hormones. And then you let the females go? Yes. The and then the male catfish, die. they will eventually die, die because you have in a labor ward? Yes. Oh, this is sad, man. <laughs> this is sad. 
my oh. friend. So men have been sacrificing since. Oh, sure. Even the catfish is sacrificing. Yes, it's sacrificed for the greater good. <laughs> anyway, for the greater good. I like that. Yes. I like that. So what stage? Um, I can see some tiny, tiny yes. fishes in here. So these are catfish fries. Okay. These are catfish fries and they are in their fry stage. They are barely two weeks old. Yes. So that's how they look. So this is two weeks? They are not two weeks old. They are barely two weeks. Yeah, barely two weeks. Okay. So these are the females that we use during the hatching process. So here they are in recovery. So this is a recovery Yes, what? this is a recovery pond. A recovery pond? Yes. Wow. So once we extract the eggs, we allow them to recover for some time before sending them back to their main pond to join their colleagues that also undergone recovery. All right. So what do you help them with to recover? What do you help them with? We get them in a sustainable water environment. We feed them well, basically giving them treatment, special treatment as they are here. We monitor them, change their water, give them food to boost their system because they have released a lot of eggs. Special treatment. <laughs> Special treatment. And the male fish is good. Yeah, is good. Yes. They eventually will end up in a kitchen. Yes. Oh, <laughs> man, sacrifice. You've been sacrificing all along. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, madam. Gifty. Madam Gifty, thank you so much You're yeah, for helping us. You're Yo. welcome. Yeah. This is the second hatchery. This is the catfish hatchery. It's managed by Amos. So this is another hatchery. We've been to the first hatchery. This is the second hatchery. Um, this place seems very big. Yeah, this is the biggest uh, hatchery we have in Harambe. Yeah. Wow. 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 So what do you do here? Take us through. Walk us through. What do you do here? Okay. Uh, what I do here is uh, artificial production of Africa catfish by picking the sexually ready female and sexually ready male. We inject them and uh, after some time we extract the eggs from the female. And the male too, we have to also pick out the sperm. Let me use that word sperm. Uh, we pick out the sperm to also fertilize the extracting eggs from the female. After that, we use our hashu tray. Yeah. Some call it cuckoo bind or caca bind. I, I don't know. I call it hashu tray. So we put, we put this in your tanks, then you spawn your eggs in. Under 24 hours, depending on the temperature, water temperature, you should have your fries. The live eggs will drop from this net into the tanks, and that's where you see all these fries. Oh, yeah. They okay. all pass through this okay. before they go to the tank. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the live ones will actually be dropping through this net. Exactly. Then the dead one will remain here. They will remain here. Yes. Oh, the, the net is very tiny. Yeah, it's tiny because their the, X the is, holes, is their X is also very, very tiny, tiny as well. Oh, okay. So that's where they pass through, they'll be able to pass through this net. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All of these ones, are they of the same day and age? All these fish you are seeing here, they are the same day and age. Yeah. Some are bigger. Yes, you see, when you respond like that, uh, we have some we call jumpers. They are jumpers, they are quickly growth. Because they feed on the, on the dead eggs. They feed on the dead eggs even when they started heating from the next year stage. They feed on that eggs to develop quickly. So once they develop, they started eating their mate because catfish they are carnivorous. Oh, okay. They are carnivorous. The more they eat fish, they grow bigger. They grow bigger. So as a nasher or if you are in charge of uh, hatchery, you have to make sure that you pick all the, the the big big fish you see in your pond. You pick it, and that's why what you have there. That's why those ones are bigger than all this. Than the rest of the same them. age, the same day, the same month. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, my brother. So, what are these tubes for? Okay, this tube is, uh, this is uh, a retort tube. It pumps, there is a machine. Okay. It pumps oxygen uh, into the water and that gives the fish oxygen. Oh, okay. So, you're giving them oxygen. Oxygen for them to survive and be able to. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, 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 that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. 
Yes, boss. Yes, boss. Where are we now? We are in the RMB tilapia hatchery. Uh, unlike the catfish hatchery, what we do here is uh, uh, the catfish is they collect the female eggs and then use the male sperms to fertilize it. No. Ours, with the tilapia hatchery, what we do is that we have brew stocks outside. The brew stocks are the female and males that give the, the, the fries or the fingerlings, if you may say. Uh, what we do is that we meet them and we collect the eggs. That means the eggs are already fertile, unlike this one that you have to do, go under an operation or so ever. This one with the tilapia, the male and the female caught or meet, and then the female breathes the eggs in the mouth. So as it takes water through the mouth, through the girls, the water would like run around the eggs and then they get hatched. We don't want the natural spawning or the natural hatching. That's why we have these jars here. Uh, what we do is that we collect the eggs, the fertilized eggs, and bring them here into the jars. We have a running water that circulates and then it runs around the water, rotation form, and then as uh, it, it runs, it starts hatching. We use this, this is a collection or tree. So when they hatch, we collect them here. Every single uh, uh, jar here or an incubator can house about one kilo of eggs. The one kilo of eggs is estimated about 100,000 fries. Oh. Yeah, so if you are having 12 here, then that means that probably if you are to fill all these ones, you'll be expecting not less than 1.2 million. Wow. Oh, yeah, should we fill all these things? Uh, unfortunately, the eggs are not in. Uh, we, we just closed down last two days. Uh, we collected the last uh, fries last two days. So next week, uh, we will have to bring all in right. eggs. Uh, so here, yeah, unlike the catfish, yeah, you don't slaughter the men. No, no, no. The male will keep on filling. As in, say, they will still... They will still be working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giving to them. Yeah, because those eggs are fed out already because the male and the female have caught or mated. But when you bring, when you come to the castle, those ones, because there have not been any mating, uh, you take the eggs which are matured, then you kill or sacrifice the male. Use the sperms to fertilize those eggs. That's the right. Yes, that's the catfish. But with the tilapia, they are all in one box or one hopper. We are housing them at one place. We have selected maybe a single male. If it's very active, we, we meet it with three females, as we men we used to do. You oh, understand? Wow. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, three females to a male. So, for instance, if you are keeping 90 brew stocks, that means you probably will be having about. Uh, with 90 female brew stock, then probably you'll be having about 30 males to, to, to meet them if they are very active. At times, uh, for successful or perfect job, you can use one for two so that you have proper resource. Oh. Yes, but you can do one for three. Oh, okay. Uh, and as they caught already, those eggs are fed, fed out already. already. So they just the female fishes keep them in their mouth and then oh really they keep the eggs, eggs in their, their mouth. mouth so you go you get some tilapia maybe somebody who doesn't know anything about fish you hey me doing i'm not in question and no and also club in the shanty we say they club is breeding is it is in the brooding stage okay until you keep your eggs in the no then as often soon, the fat grows and the milk take it dissolve oxygen through the uh, system. Uh, then then soon running around the eggs, you know, starts helping it to hatch. And this is rotation on the air and the air. So we end up running so the fat because you know what? to keep the eggs alive because with the dissolve oxygen in the water will keep the eggs alive until they hatch. Oh, okay. there's that. Okay. So it's hard. We keep them here barely 24 hours. You take them out and we do something we call the hormone treatment or sex reversal. Is it difficult, the hatching? If you're oh, removing the eggs, is uh, it difficult? taking the eggs from the mouth of the. We have experts that take eggs from the mouth of the fishes. Without killing them? No, 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 no. They'll just hold it this way, hold the tree like this, then open the mouth of the female, just wash. 
the system, just like somebody keeping something in their mouth and you hold the jaw like that to oh, just okay. release it. So okay. you hold it this way, open the mouth gently, you take the eggs from them. That's right. the egg collection. It's oh, not okay. anything difficult. Wow. So wow. just some seconds, you put it back in the water. Wow. Yes. Wow. Okay, this, as you can see, as you can see, is the this is where we nest the fries that we bring them out from the the hatchery the hatchery what we do is that we keep them here and we will give them some feed that have been uh, mixed with hormone the hormone what the hormone does is that it it, it reverses their sex to maybe about 95 to 98 percent males tilapia Keeps on producing after some two, three months, you see them producing, and no farmer would want to stock, especially with the pond culture, no farmer would want to stock fishes that are productive. That would be uh, when it happens that way, you see that they compete for feed, they compete for dissolved oxygen, they compete for almost everything. So, for instance, as I said, that uh, one fish can keep. 5,000 or 3,000 eggs in their mouth and you have like 10 of them in the pond and they are to, 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 to produce or reproduce, you end up getting an overstocked pond. Okay. They now compete for the oxygen in the water, they compete for the feed, so they, you end up getting stunted growth. The growth rate All of right. the fishes wouldn't be so much. they won't grow well. So yes, so that's why we, we, we treat them with the hormone to make the males plenty, maybe 98% of times you can even get 99% results. So that the reproduction wouldn't be much. Wouldn't be and much. so, so for instance, if you are well. keeping a yeah, thousand fishes here and you know that you are giving a thousand, uh, uh, maybe five kilos of feed to them, and you end up, they end up reproducing, and that five kilos of feed will not be able to satisfy all of them again. Meanwhile, you know that you have only thousand pieces of fishes in there, but they have reproduced to maybe ten thousand. So that feed will not be sufficient for them. The oxygen in the water, quantity of oxygen in the water, or the amount of oxygen in the water will be depleted so early because all of them try to strive and get some air to breathe. So yeah. that's why we treat them with the hormones. And so that's the we sex reversal? That's the sex reversal. Want most of them to be males? Yes, uh, like the, the reproduction system of, of the of the fish will just be deactivated oh, okay. to understand that they can't reproduce. Okay. Not the, that you have turned them to males? But yeah, but at least why is it castrated or <laughs> something like that. Don't castrate them. Don't castrate <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, that's right. When, when you don't do that too and they keep on producing, you can't also... You can't even them. get a proper harvest. You can't get a proper harvest. Because they, they, they are going to be stunted. Because with a commercial farm and you assume as a farmer, as a good farmer, you assume that within six months to eight months, your fishes should be ready for you to sell. But if they keep on reproducing and you are training feed each and every day, feed prices have also gone up. We are, we are lucky producing with our... Uh, or I, uh, own, own feed, but uh, mind you, you are still buying the raw materials sure. and the prices are sure. still huge. Sure. Uh, so sure. you don't have anything to lose. Uh, you, you, you have to take care of those, all those things. That's why you reverse them. You sell them out to... Uh, so, so let me ask, at what point do you collect the eggs from them? Is it when they are two months old, three months old? Or you just we, we, we select we, the brew trucks. But at times you see some fishes and you see, oh, this one is very active. This one is is a very like when it, it has to produce, it could be a good mother, it could be a good father or something. So you just get the males of them, the f uh, females of them. Some three months they are good to go if you give them proper feed with some protein and those things they can mate and then you collect the eggs every when they start giving eggs every 7 10 12 days to 14 days you can collect eggs so for instance we are doing a 10 10 days so 10 days we collect the eggs and then we keep them inside they still go ahead and then after some 10 days or barely 12 days you go again and take the eggs. So you're taking them until they get to a point that the, 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 the production 
we reduce. Okay. They become old, old, old weak, enough, yeah. and they, they, you have to now change them, and the process continues. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. 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 So. How do you select the active ones? Because they are in the water. How do you get to know the active ones that you select? Oh, uh, they, we bring them in harpers like this. This is just like a bag. The, um, the beneath is all sealed. So you bring them in here, you gather them to one point, you use a bar or anything to hold that part. Then you use a scoop net to pick them up. Then you, then you look you at you the just look, No, you just look at the system you can see if it's a female you see the vulva if you see a male you see that there's a projected small thing there um, <laughs> you can see so I quite know. That, that, that is I a quite man know. for you, you man, man. Uh, ready, uh, ready exactly, to exactly so so sometimes sometimes you can even use the color to detect oh okay yes okay, okay. Yes. okay. that's okay yeah that's okay so don't you have what, what is your challenge once they are here? Because uh, I am told if the space is open like this, birds, um, birds, exactly. Yeah, as you can see, there goes one. You see the birds. This is so very closer around. to the river. This is closer to the Ayensu. Okay, uh, river Ayensu is right yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> the birds come from those places and then come and hunt the fishes. That's why some of our ponds, a lot of them, we've, we've covered them with nets. These are cover nets okay. to prevent any foreign objects being uh, uh, objects or subjects for so So any poor air bow, any foreign material not to come for. So, so when the net is there, it's providing them security? Yes, at least. But the revival also has a crocodiles. Yeah, it has fishes. That I know. Yeah, yeah. Shrimps too, they inside. No, I'm, I'm talking about Yeah, they are, yeah, yeah, yeah. And... They have some, so at times you meet them, they, they come on board. So when they come, us. what do you do? Uh, they you kill just the... call a hunter to come and gun Don't them. Don't they enter? Their ponds? Yes. Oh, no, they are. The, the only pond I saw, one inside the other time, was the sedimentation pond. At that place, we do not keep any fish in there. Oh, okay. Uh, so. Then so one of the fence, uh, one side of the fence broke. And oh, okay, entered. and it's coming. So yeah, it so means they yeah. were readily behind the fence, yeah, want yeah, to, yeah, want, yeah. wanting to come in. At night, they always want to, to also solve Because they know what is happening here. Yeah, sure. Wow. All right. So, um, finally, we meet the owner of R&B Farms. Okay. I am Jibril. Okay, Jibril, welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, before I begin, let me do a point of correction. R&B Farms is owned by two partners, uh, hence the name R&B, Richie and Ben. Okay. Yeah, we are two partners uh, with my senior brother, who's an entrepreneur and is into agro business. Okay. And then we team up to uh, have this uh, fish farm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to begin with, uh, the farm is uh, very young. It's about two and a half years old. Okay. Uh, we started somewhere in the middle of 2020. And our plan is to have a fully integrated fish farm. And when we say fully integrated fish farm, we mean a fish farm that will have everything from beginning to the end. If you want to know anything about fish farm, be it the hatchery, be it the grow out, be it feed fish feed processing, even post harvest. Post harvest that's how you process the fish at the end of the period. And also, fortunately, we also added uh, aquaculture training. So, if you want to learn about fish farm, uh, RMB farms, so far as the country is concerned, is a place that you can have it all. Uh, it's also not only some also go into only tilapia or only catfish here you are fortunate to get catfish and tilapia training as well as all the other integrated aspects of uh, farming catfish and tilapia. So if you say uh, R&B fish farm or R&B farms is fully integrated fish farm in the country, that's what we mean. We hatch our own fingerlings. 
both catfish and tilapia. Most farmers from uh, Akosombo, from the uh, Weja Lake, and all of them, they come here and buy their fingerlings and go and put them in their cages. We also have ponds that we grow out the like catfish and tilapia. Uh, you see from the video uh, what we have on the on the field. Uh, we also have a feed mill that will process fish feed. And the interesting thing is that. Uh, we process our own fish feed, therefore we have the capacity and ability to control whatever goes into the pond. Whatever the fish eats, we have ability to control it. Uh, because our vision is to have a fully organic fish farm. Uh, you don't want a situation that you put a fish in the pond and you have a very big fish or whatever it is. No, we want the fish to take time to grow as it is. Everything that we, put, we give to the fish is very organic. And anything that me as a human being, I cannot eat, I won't give it to the fish to eat. Because the thinking is at the end of the day, whatever you're going to put into the water for the fish to eat, be even it the water itself, the quality of the water itself, at the end of the day, the fish is going to be consumed by human beings. Therefore, it has to be very wholesome. So IMD farm is very unique. And these are the things that set us apart from other fish farms we have wow. in the country. Wow. Um, we've moved around. And we've seen that it is such a huge place. <laughs> is it capital intensive? It is. It is. Uh, <clears throat> oftentimes, uh, it depends on your business strategy. You can decide to start small and grow gradually. Uh, the vision of my brother and myself uh, is that we rather want to start big and move on. So you can see that within the first two years, all we did was to invest in infrastructure. The hatchery, the ponds, the feed mill, staff quarters, canteen, uh, name it. So we put all this infrastructure, the road construction, even bringing electricity uh, to the farm, transformer and all the various machines that we have. We make sure that right from the beginning, uh, we bring it on board so that uh, we don't have any problem. Uh, for takeoff, and that's exactly what we've done. So it's very, very capital intensive. If you're constructing one and a half kilometer road from the town to this place, getting electricity to this area and water is a huge cost. Yes, it is. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So it means that you <clears throat> decide to start on a very large scale. So if somebody would also want to start on a smaller scale, is it? Possible. Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, uh, that is uh, the encouraging part of it. Uh, I, I made it uh, from the, I said it from the beginning that uh, ours is a fully integrated fish farm. Trust me, it's not everybody that wants to do it big like we are doing. And what I just mentioned to you, you can see that we, if you break it apart, we have four different segments of fish farming that anybody can go into. You can go into the production of the fingerlings. You can go into the go out just like where everybody does most of the people in fish farm do on the lake or in, the, in their ponds they just come and buy the fingerlings go and put them in patiently feed them for uh, four five months six months and they sell out that's also another aspect so the fingerling production is one go out is another then the third part is feed production you can go into the feed production that most companies in terms of free zones people are doing. They produce their fish feed and sell to fish farmers. That's another aspect of it. Then the training. Of course, we have the universities who train people in fish farm and aquaculture uh, uh, degrees and all that. We also have practical hands-on training on site. So these are four aspects that anybody can decide to go in and specialize in. Uh, even here, if you want to break it in, uh, into two, we can also say even, even eight aspect of it why because we are dealing with tilapia and catfish okay yes so uh you don't have to do all the things that we are doing no you can specialize in each one of them and then the good thing is that IMB farms provides training in all these areas all right so you don't have to do everything that they are doing here you can specialize in one area uh, which you have an interest to start with from your, the way you are speaking, it tells me that you have a lot of knowledge in whatever you do here. Are you a professional fish farmer? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, no, uh, my background is not uh, in anything agriculture. My background is in finance and accounting. Uh, I entered into this business by accident. And just like anything that you want to do, you invest your time, your energy, and everything you need uh, 
to understand. Uh, because, for instance, if I'm going to work with people in this industry, be it in the regulatory aspect, like Fisheries Commission Ministry, be it my workers, be it hatchery operators, I need to understand what they are doing. Uh, so I invested a lot of uh, energy and time into uh, the knowledge. Not only what I research personally, but also I get anybody that has the skills to come on board and then I learn from them before they leave. <laughs> okay. So th th that means you have become a, a, a reservoir of knowledge. Uh, <laughs> if you bring in the specialist and you are, you know, tapping from them, learning from each and every one of them, it means you have become a, a, a super when it comes to the, the, the knowledge acquisition you get from them. Uh, no, I can't say me alone, but with my team, uh, I learn from, from my staff a lot. And the good thing is that whoever we bring on board has something to offer. Uh, so we all learn, and that's what I also encourage all the staff, that we should all learn from each other. So uh, I try to understand, but then I can't pretend to know it all. All right. Mm -hmm. So, accounting and finance background. What motivated you into fish into fish farming? Ah, uh, maybe it was in my blood or something. Uh, after working in corporate world for a while, I decided to do something farming. Uh, it has always been on my back, at the back of my mind to go into farming. Uh, it wasn't fish farm specific, uh, but then I had uh, the feelings of doing something in agriculture. So initially, my thinking was even going to uh, chili pepper production. Okay. And then, by whatever reason, and of, of course, the vision of my partner, who is my senior brother as well, uh, we diverted from the chili pepper production into fish farming. Okay. And since we didn't have the knowledge, we did well by consulting, bringing all the people in the industry who have the knowledge to come and advise us. And then, uh, Somehow we see the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, so it means that you don't have to be in the dark. If you don't know, you still have to seek for the knowledge. Exactly. The moment you get the interest to do it, you, you have to learn about it to be able to do it better. It's, it's, it's very necessary. And one thing too that I always say to encourage the youth is that farming, be it uh, crop production or fish or whatever it is, it's not for the, uh, I say it's, it's not the divine uh, vocation for the illiterate. No. Uh, because uh, anybody can go into farming, and especially if you're educated, it's a place that you can make make a very good impact. Uh, we done this in only two and a half years. Uh, we believe that the background and education that we have also help us in being able to speed up and also seeing how unique our our system is. Uh, so we shouldn't say that farming is for the poor, for the literate, no. Especially the youth who have gotten degrees and they are staying at home and thinking that farming is for the poor and uneducated, no. Uh, actually, here is a place that you can make a very good impact uh, with any little effort that you put in. Uh, so learning is good uh, and it helps a lot, but then don't let that one drag you into sitting at home and waiting for an office job, no. Here in the, into farming, be it crop production, fish farming, animal production, or whatever it is, uh, is a place to look at, and you can make a very good impact and good money. Good money, I like that. Yeah. Is, is it difficult fish farming? Is it difficult? It's interesting. Uh, the only challenge is that uh, I say is that uh, uh, getting the skill people to work with is a challenge. Uh, we do fish farming in Ghana is something new. Traditionally, we have our marine fish, uh, fishermen who go to sea, and even those who are on the lakes uh, using the canoe to catch fish in the rivers, uh, they are very few. Uh, now that uh, we've seen that the fish stocks in our river bodies, various water bodies, and also in the sea, is dwindling, and then the government and across the group, people are say, seeing that uh, aquaculture is the way. Rearing your own fish or catching your own fish is the way to feed, provide f uh, uh, food security. Uh, now all attention is going to fish farming. Uh, as a result of this area being a very new area, we don't have the skill set in there. Unfortunately, most of our university uh, graduates, when they leave, they also want to go and sit in the office. They don't want to go into the interland. They don't want to go into the farming. Even though they have a agriculture degree, they still don't want to go to the field. We have collaboration with some of the universities. 
who bring their students here for practical uh, experience and uh, and also uh, for excursions you can see that it amazes them because uh, most of the stuff they read it in the books I mean, the universities don't have the farms that have this practical experience. So when you are looking for somebody to come and say a uh, hatchery operator or fish feed processor, it's very difficult to get someone. So this is the challenge uh, that we have. Uh, but then we being uh, uh, the vision we have and also trying to be pay setters in this area, we try to take the youth and train them and build their capacity so that uh, eventually uh, they'll be able to take up. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, you, you said something um, which is still ringing in my mind that um, uh, farming is not a divine vocation for the illiterate or the poor. Uh, I think I really, I really love that because it looks as if that has been the trend or the belief. Yes, if you are a farmer, then it means you are poor. Uh, the, any person or anybody who works in the office is highly respected or rated than you know any farmer yeah do you think farming is lucrative it is uh farming is very lucrative and uh i can tell you uh that uh, if you're able to do the right thing uh it's a it's a it's a vocation that you wouldn't like to move away from it in ghana and most african countries it's a bit difficult because uh, as a youth fresh from school even acquiring a land uh, to do it big or something is not easy. Uh, but then everything you start on a small scale and gradually you can expand. If you, if you set your mind to it, I think that this is what you want to do, I think you'll find a way. But then it's, it's very lucrative. Yes. Over here, uh, we have about uh, 25 permanent staff okay. and then and a number of uh, casuals. We engage a lot of the youth and then the women in the town for uh, temporary jobs. And I mean, in a <clears throat> village like this, uh, what job will you be able to uh, employ? What company will you be able to employ over 50 workers at a time? So stuff like this is also areas that the government needs to look into, that it can create a lot of employment for people uh, to do, instead of uh, having the youth and women sitting at home and not having anything to do. Yeah, so it's very lucrative. We have uh, graduates here. We have fishermen here. Will you believe? Sure. All the, the, the big ponds that you see when we are harvesting, we bring fishermen from the nearby fishing communities. Winneba, Mankwazi, they all come here. They, they help us in, in harvesting the fish uh, for the market women. They also come and uh, mend the nets. You saw the nets that we used to cover and all that. They come and mend the nets uh, for us. So even the marine fisheries, we support them by providing uh, employment for some of these traditional fishermen. We have the women in town who come and dig the tilapia and help us in freezing them and help the market women who come in preparing it for them. Other than that, they'll be sitting at home. There's no job for them. So these are the jobs. And then the artisans, all the constructions that we uh, 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 building structures that you've seen here, uh, we use the local artisans in doing it. So it's, it's an area that cr creates a lot of employment for wow. the youth. Wow. Yes. Wow. So <clears throat> you are creating employment for the people in the community and even the marine workers. Um, do you have ready markets or the market is erratic? <laughs> uh, everything it, from beginning it was it was difficult not like difficult in getting uh, the market because we as i told you we are trying to put an infrastructure in place so the little that we put in the ponds were for experimental basis trying to learn trying to see the management how to go so initially uh, pushing those fishes out were a bit difficult now we didn't know time that people got to know us uh, we can't supply <laughs> oh, uh, every now and then we get calls. People who need fingerlings, they need tilapia fingerlings, catfish fingerlings. People who need tilapia, big tilapia, big catfish. People who need fish feed, and uh, it's amazing. Uh, on your way here, I don't think you saw any signboard. But no, 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 interestingly, no. every now and then cars are coming from Accra, Cape Coast, or Dam, Mankasimswe group. 
uh, uh, coming to take fish. So when everything is ready, uh, I don't think we'll be able to able to supply. So how did you then achieve that such an enviable image? Because you don't have any signpost. How? Uh, yeah, I think uh, if you have a good thing, it sells itself, and that is our mentality. Uh, see where we are located. Uh, it was strategically positioned. The reason is that we are in the middle of three major market centers okay. in Ghana. Uh, Kasua, Mankesim, and Suedro. And by extension, we can say six major market centers because Kasua, by extension, is Accra. Okay. Mankesim, by extension, is Cape Coast, even Takrade. And then Suedro, by extension, is Akimoda. So we are strategically positioned in the center of these six major market centers that, as I told you, if you have to make noise, we can supply. So that also gives us that strategic advantage. If you are at Akoso Mo, you probably have to try and come to Accra. You cannot reach uh, Akimoda or Suedro or Mankesim and Takrad. If you are at, uh, raising your fish at uh, Kumase, you probably have to, to over 250 kilometers to reach Accra. But thank God we are in the middle of these cities, Cape Coast, Mankesim, Akimoda, Agunan Suedro, Kasua, and of course, Accra. We can reach out to any of these. So uh, it makes our marketing very easy. <laughs> wow. So strategically positioned to the point that you didn't make noise, but then you are still unable to meet the demand. Exactly. <laughs> Wow. Well, what's, what's the future now? Okay, fortunately, uh, we've been able to set up infrastructure to take off. Uh, the coming years, uh, we are going to then increase production. Uh, as you said, uh, since we are, our demand is high and we are not able to supply some of them, what are we going to do? Yes, now, we, as part of our training program, those who come for the training, after the training, we provide them with the tarpaulin tanks, we provide them with fingerlings, we provide them with feed. So they go back and raise these fish. So within five, six months, the, those fish are ready. So the plan is to buy back from them and supply to our customers. Uh, but the most good news and most important aspect of it is that we are setting up a cannery. For the first time, we are going to have a catfish cannery in the country, wow. if not the sub region. So you are going to take catfish like a tuna, Stack is tuna or like the sardine type where you can open it, take it from the shelf and eat. Either with hot sauce or with tomato sauce. That's what we are going to set up. So we have a place. We are planning to bring the machine. So the future is very bright so far the uh, uh, aquaculture industry in Ghana is concerned. Once the country is in place, we are going to, to be, it's going to be very good for most of the farmers. Because some farmers are in certain locations that they can't have bias. In this case, you have a location to send your fish uh, and then we'll buy to use it to feed the, the factory because we cannot supply or if a factory is going to produce about five tons or ten tons a day, uh, we can supply. So uh, these go out, as we call them, our trainees who will go back and uh, grow their fish, they will have ready market for their fish. The same as any other farmers who are not even coming from our outfit can have a ready market for their product. And this is what we are doing to help the aquaculture industry in Ghana. Man, this is serious. For the first time, we are going to have canned catfish. catfish. That's correct. <laughs> canned catfish. And when, that, when the country is set up, I, I believe I'll be the first person to come and speak with you. <laughs> you are welcome. And, and really taste it and then tell the whole world how it tastes like. Um, like you mentioned, the, those that come for their training, is there anybody who can come or unless you, you've attained a university degree before you can enroll? <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Uh, we are not in competition with any university or any training institution. Okay. Uh, the reason is that we provide the traditional, practical, hands-on training for everybody. Okay. Women, uneducated, disabled, anybody that can come. It's not like, oh, I don't have SHA certificate, I don't have a BEC, no, 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 no. I didn't go to school, I can't speak English. No, it's not English matter. Anybody can come. And they, they, we, we, we have the, the, the standard. Take, uh, go to any typical village, a uh, fishing village. How many of them have, been, have degrees? And they are fishermen, very educated. They go to the fish at night, they're able to know they are where, where about the compass, where to get the fish. 
traditionally they are trained they don't need to get degree or go to classroom to know how to fish so if our forefathers have done this traditionally and now we are fortunate to have latest technology and knowledge we can do more than that so you don't need to have a qualification to come you don't need to speak english to come you don't need to uh, say that i am a disabled so i can't come everybody is welcome so far you have interest in fish farming uh, we are ready to help you wow wow so anybody can come and learn we are not looking at certificates yes we are looking at your ability your interest yeah. if you have the interest come and you'll be helped yes and then let me add this to it the interesting part of it is that at the end of your training the training we are going to give you is not something you are going to stay at home and say okay i have a certificate from rmd farms so now i'm looking for a job and that's why our training is very unique no we are not training you to go and look for a job we are training you to go and do your own face farm uh, so the knowledge you are going to have is more practical and that's why it's open to all so that it's not like I need certificate to pass so that I can get this and go and look for a job. No. Once we train you, you finish uh, with resource permitting, we give you all the starter pack that you can go and start your own thing at your back here. Wow, wow. Moving around, we, we, we've seen that you, you have such a, a nice place. It's very vast and good stretches. Yes. Do you have any support from government? <laughs> no. This is a purely private venture, uh, not even from any, any bank. Uh, it's the investment resources from the two partners uh, and with the support of God and all our workers, uh, we are working extra hard to put every little resource we have to good use that has brought us this far. Uh, no, I can say that we don't have even a special from any government or any uh, government or international institution. Everything is sold from our own investment. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? So two brothers coming together to do this marvelous work that is offering um, employment in the, in the whole neighborhood. So kindly come around and see things for yourself. This is Authentic Plus TV. I am your man, Jibril, having a discussion with Mr. Texan, a partner of R&B Farms. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, the, for, for your visit, Authentic TV, uh, and then uh, wish you all the best. And as I told you, our doors are open. Uh, you can come and visit any, at any point in time. Interestingly, over here, if you come here every three months, you see something new. So don't say, I've seen it all. No, you haven't seen nothing yet. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so so, so what, what is the greatest challenge? The greatest challenge is employment. Uh, it's, it's a skill uh, labor, skill labor in this area. Uh, of course, recently with the uh, increasing cost of goods, uh, it's also input cost is very very high. Uh, I told you we produce our own uh, feed. Uh, that is not even easy. Most farms who buy the feed, uh, they are they are they are struggling. Some of us we are able to produce our own feed. Uh, ingredient prices have tripled or doubled in the past uh, few months. Uh, so the cost of input is very high and getting the skills that you need is also an, another situation uh, that we face. Are you selling the feed? The feed that you are producing? Uh, uh, yes, finally uh, from January we are going to open our door to sell R&B uh, feed, feed uh, farm feed to all fish farmers especially those in the central western region who are closer close by and also those at uh, the wager lake they can come and buy the feed from here we had we have plants that we're using to produce our fish feed unfortunately the capacity was very low so we're using it to supply our own fish in the farm but now we've taken stock of delivery of a 1.2 ton per hour capacity Plants. Wow. Uh, if you saw those new uh, shipping containers there, sure. Yeah, they are in there. We are upgrading the transformer, uh, capacity of the transformer in the town. So hopefully by January, we'll install the new fish uh, feed plant and we'll be producing more for, for other farmers. And that has been our vision. Our vision is to grow the industry, not to be selfish, expand it, grow the industry, support other farmers. And hopefully Ghana will be the hub for aquaculture for the sub region. When it comes to integrated fish farming in the country, 
how, how many are you? Are you number one? So far as one stop place for fish farming is concerned, I uh, will say that uh, I'm here to find somebody. If you go to the lake, you see most big players there who are bigger than RMB, but they are not integrated. If you say they are not integrated, we mean that they come and buy the fingerlings from us, be it uh, tilapia fingerlings or catfish fingerlings, and go and put it in their cages, feed them, and they go and they sell them. We also have small, small hatcheries, or we call the hatchery operators. All they do is that they hatch the fingerlings be it catfish or tilapia, and sell to other farmers. As I told you, we also have factories that produce the fish feed and come and sell to fish farmers. But to go to one stop place that you can have all this at one place, I'm here to find one in Ghana. Wow. Especially in both catfish and tilapia. Congratulations. Congratulations. This is Thank great. You. This is great. And I believe that's the reason why we won the 2021 National Best Fish Farm Award. Wow. So we had a, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, recently, uh, we've been there's been a new uh, 2022 person, but 2020 we won the national best fish farm. You won the national best best fish farmer. Yes. So RMB won the national best fish farmer, farmer award in 2020. In 2021, the whole country. Yes. So that that that, that tells, it speaks volume. It speaks for itself. Yes. You know where to go. Yes. It is the biggest place of all. Yes. So those of you out there who want to enter into fish farming this is integrated fish farming they have everything they have everything here from fingerlings to to to, to the fish that will enter the kitchen <laughs> yes yes <laughs> I, 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 when when we went to the hatchery yes we got information that um doing the fertilization processes after they have collected the um the eggs from the female catfish the male catfish, when they have collected the milk, is it of length? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sperm. The lady told me that it's called the milk. Wow, you're a fast learner. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, so, the, the, the catfish, which happens to be the male, after yeah. they've collected the, the, sperm, the sperms, yes. eventually ends up in the kitchen. And then the female catfish will go back into the water again. <laughs> yes, uh, actually. Uh, most farmers or most factory uh, actually operators, they don't do that. Uh, the males, when they take the sperms, they can sew them back. Just like a human being going through surgery. You can sew them back and put them in the, in the, in the pond and then allow them to recover. Just like the females, after we have extracted the eggs, we put them in a special area we call the recovery. Observe them for weeks for them to recover and then you can introduce them to special ponds. The males can go through the same thing. The unfortunate part of the males, of course, males are always sacrificed, <laughs> is that after they we cut them, the female we don't cut, we just squeeze the eggs. Okay. After you induce them, you squeeze the eggs. So they are normal immediately after. Some few uh, days they are okay. But the males, we cut them to take the sperms. You can sew them back and let them recover and, and introduce them back into the pond but here we don't want to do that because our hatchery uh, has a capacity of producing about one million catfish a month the hatchery for the tilapia is about 2.4 million a month so wow. this tells you that we are using a lot of blue stock that is the male and the female we are using a lot of them okay so we don't see the reason why we also always have to sew them back and put them out there the kitchen is there you saw the canteen our staff eat morning breakfast and then lunch in the afternoon and sometimes they eat dinner if they are working late uh, so we need some in the kitchen so as soon as they finish let it go to the kitchen to the so kitchen. that the staff can also enjoy that's that's the way but then yeah some people don't take it to the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I am told the students when they come around you feed them morning to evening and yes. they, they, they have hostel that we went and visited. Yes. And you feed them morning yeah. to evening. So is it expensive to enroll? Do you have to pay so much? Uh, expensive? No. Uh, the training itself doesn't cost that much. But if you want the starter pack, that is the tarpaulin tank, uh, the feed, and then the uh, fingerlings to start with, that's where it brings additional cost okay, okay. and it also depends on your ability like 
do you need 2,000 finger lengths, 5,000 or 1,000 finger lengths? That will also determine how many tarpaulin tanks you need mm -hmm. and how many feet you want to go with. But the good thing is that we custom make to each one's pocket. Oh, I need 5,000 or 1,000 finger lengths to go and start with. Oh, I need one tarpaulin tank. No, I have, my pocket is deep. I need 5,000 finger lengths. So I need a double tarpaulin tank or something like that. Uh, the beauty of it is that whatever your ability is, then that's, by, what. that's what but we provide 10 day or two week training uh, that includes the boarding uh, that is a accommodation and feeding and the training itself uh, that is not much but then if you want the starter pack it's also like your uh, your equipment that you're going to use to start your business so everything is all inclusive here you don't come for the training and go and i'm going to look for where can i get get this everything we have everything in here so you can come for the training and go and prepare and come and buy the pack or we can put all the ball pack together and uh, minute after your training you are going with everything to set it up all right thank you so much so at this juncture i would want you to advise the youth yes uh, i've already said enough in that area uh it's very difficult and very disheartening when you are moving around or you go home or go to, you are driving by you see the youth sitting under trees playing drafts or cats and they don't have jobs to do i don't think anybody uh, want to sit under that tree if they have something to do uh, but unfortunately uh, this is the situation we find ourselves uh, all over in the country when you move around uh, are we always hoping that some donor agencies will come and support the training that RMB is offering. In this case, we can get all these youth together to come for the training and give them the starter pack to go and start for free. Because it's a way of providing employment for them. They don't have the money. The parents don't have the money. That's why they are sitting at home. If any donor agency can come and part of RMB that train 100 youth, train 1,000 youth, and provide them with their equipment to start, that would be great thing. We can pick them for any community that they want. The women and, and this youth, can come for the training they can go and start something so yeah we share the, the difficulties that most of the women and youth face but then uh, we also want to let them know that there's a way out sure. there's a way out and there's a very good future in aquaculture uh, so they should look at this area and we also appeal to the donors uh, to come and partner of RMB to provide employment for these youth and women in their various communities that's beautiful that's beautiful and so um throughout the video you heard that we have uh, i am part of rmb from now we, we have hostel facilities so it does not matter where you are whether you are in the country you are out of the country and you want to learn about fish farming kindly uh, contact rmb um, how do they contact you uh, we, we have our website www.rbfarmslimited.com rbfarmslimited.com once you go to this website our phone numbers and everything is there on the other if you want to call us uh, you can call us on 020-463-1952 020-463-1952 uh, you can also google us at rmb farms ghana once you, you google rmb farms ghana uh, our website most of our youtube videos will be there uh, we are located in the central region uh, not far from Uniba junction in a town called gumbo and swahim uh, we, are, we are it's about a few uh, kilometers from Uniba junction to the farm on the swedro road uh, we are not far from accra uh, our brothers and sisters who are in the diaspora uh, you can google us give our links to your nephews your brothers who are in ghana and uh, looking for a job uh, support them to pay by paying for them to come for the training uh, and uh, you will regret it instead of they being here and always sending their money you can help them to acquire skills and do something for themselves thank you so much thank you so much so um, if you haven't subscribed to authentic plus tv kindly do that now i told you that we are going to bring you information that is very educative i've learned a lot and i know you have also learned a lot and then you continue to take interest in the discussion or the conversation that we had and follow up and then come and learn and do something for yourself follow us on twitter instagram and facebook authentic plus tv the real news breaker thank you Thank <laughs> you.